Hi everyone, I'm Sandy and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I have a book haul for you, kind of an unexpected book haul. There's a Christmas book, a, a my Christmas kind of book haul, but largely most of these are presents to myself. And I really blame Barnes & Noble for this because yesterday, yesterday, I don't know what day this is going live, Monday, I got an email from Barnes & Noble saying we have our 50% off our hardcover book sale. Of course, I said, I have to go to that. <laughs> um, what, do I need more hardcover books? No, no, I do not. Did I want more? Yes. <laughs> so, uh, and then the Barnes and Noble that I went to is virtually right next door to a half price books. Yeah, it, and they were also having a sale. So I did really well in half price books as far as how much I spent. I spent more in Barnes and Noble, but I love the books that I got. So I thought I would come on here and share them with you. Now, a few of these books I've had for a while. They aren't ones that I've bought in this last week or so, uh, but I thought I would share them all. That way I can put them away and get them off of kind of a special reserved shelf that I have. Um, so I'll buy the books, put them on a separate shelf, and then wait until I share. You don't need to know all that. Moving on. Okay. All right. So I am, I will also tell you if they are a thousand one book, uh, as far as what's on here and then whether or not I have any known reading plans for these books. So one of the things I have been toying with is Shorty September. Yes, that's nine months away, but I have been kind of compiling some small books and storing them, stockpiling them. And one of the books is one that I've wanted to read for quite some time, and it is The Crucible by Arthur Miller. And this is a very short play, and I have always wanted to read this. Uh, so I saw it and just had to pick it up. Plus, I love the, I love the cover of this with the red and the black church, um, but I did did pick it up with kind of shorty September in mind. That's my first book. The next book I got also potentially for uh, shorty September and it is The House on Mango Street by Sandra Cisneros. I think that's how you say that name. Again, very short particular book. I don't know much about this particular one. Uh, I did pick it up. I thought actually it was on the thousand and one book list. And it's actually not. So yeah, it was kind of one of those I picked up without checking the list and I should have checked the list. It feels like it should have been on the list just by how popular it was, but it's not. And then I do have some thousand and one books. So these are the books I got at Half Price Books. All total, I spent $15 on these four books. So I'm very happy with the amount that I spent for these. But the first one is this one. Um, by Afra Bain. It's a collection of short stories and the one that is on the thousand and one book list is this one or I'll have to turn it around Oranoko uh, and for some reason I have this as red on my list but I don't know that I've actually read it. Again short story and so I'm uh, still compile, compiling things for shorty September, uh, but that is ultimately why I ended up buying this particular one. Only one of these is actually on the Thousand One Book Countdown. And then the other short one that I got uh, is this one, which is The Sorrows of Young Werther by Johann Wolfgang van Gogh. I'm not sure that's how you say that name. Uh, so this one, again, super short for potentially shorty September is the reason why I picked it up. This is when first published in Germany in 1774, Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, the, sor Goethe, the Sorrows of Young Werther, created a cessation and was both condemned and embraced. Okay, a full-blooded portrayal of impetuous youth and all-consuming passion, this book has been a beacon for generations of readers, especially the young. We'll see how this goes. Um, if it's hopefully it's not similar to On the Road by Jack Kerouac, which was not one of my favorite books, uh, but this will be my first time reading this particular author, but another good candidate potentially for Shorty September. I found this one, which is um, E R E. W-H-O-N by Samuel Butler. I'll have to research how to say that. Uh, and this one, I just saw it. I think it was $2 at the Half Price Bookstore. So I did absolutely pick this one up. I do like these classic um, Penguin editions because I like how they look on the shelf. And that shelf has a lot of room. So that is ultimately why I ended up getting this one. I don't think I've read any Samuel Butler. Uh, but I don't know when I would read this one, but it was on sale and I couldn't resist it. So darn you half price books for having a sale. Uh, the next one I actually have 
reading plans for, and it is Crime and Punishment by Dostoevsky. I will be reading this in April with Gemma from Gemma Books and Alice from Alice in the Giant Bookshelf. Alice and I actually talked about this in 2022, that we would like to read this together, and then I promptly forgot about it and put a different Dostoevsky on my 2023 list, but I'm ecstatic that I'm going to be reading this with those two. It should be a lot of fun, and it's not super thick. Um, I, of course, have been reading The Brothers Karamazov, and so this will be a good follow-up to that. I do like this edition quite a bit. Um, the translator in this particular one, Constance, Constance Garnett. So I'm not familiar with that translation. Uh, it's definitely a different translator than the Brothers Karamazov, but I will be tackling Crime and Punishment in April. So to go along with that at Barnes & Noble, I did find this one, The Sinner and the Saint by Kevin Birmingham, and you'll see Dostoevsky down here, and The Gentleman Murderer Who Inspired a Masterpiece. This is supposed to be all about crime and punishment. And so the beginning of this just says, The Sinner and the Saint is deeply researched and immersive tale of how Dostoevsky came to write Crime and Punishment and why it changed the world. As a young man, Dostoevsky was a celebrated writer, but his involvement with radical politics of his day condemned him to a long Siberian exile. Okay. There he spent years studying the criminals who were his companions. So I'm hoping to read this and this in April. I think I should read Crime and Punishment and then read The Sinner and the Saint. If you've read these, let me know uh, what you think of that. I do love that they're both like red and white and yeah, I think that's a brilliant. Um, whoever designed this, these two covers, I'm sure they didn't design them together. But yeah, these two, I'm hoping to read both of these in April. This could be my nonfiction pick in April, and that one uh, is just a thousand and one book for April. Okay, so the uh, the next book I've had for a while and I just haven't talked about yet, I will be doing this as a buddy read in March for March Mystery Madness, and I will be reading Killers of a Certain Age by Deanna Rayborn. I love this cover. Maybe I'm just drawn to red and black covers. It, it's possible. Um, it's kill or be killed, but they've been at this a long time. And so, yeah, I'm really excited by this one. I think it should be fun. Uh, a murder mystery, perfect for March. It'll help lighten the... Uh, Les Miserables that I will be reading in March. Hopefully this is a fast read and I'll be reading this with my friend Angela. So yeah, Killers of a Certain Age. The other book I've had for a while that I haven't talked about is by Kesey Lehman and it's Long Division. This author is the author of a memoir named uh, Heavy, which was a really brilliant memoir uh, and that I loved quite a bit. And I saw this one and thought, you know, I'm just going to give it a try. I went into it blind as well, uh, but I'm really excited about reading this. And the fun thing is with this, so here's the front of the book and then here's the back of the book. And so <laughs> I don't know it, what that, and then in here, the font is one way and then the font is the other way. So that's interesting. I don't know what that's about. Hopefully I'll learn more. The book that I actually got for, for Christmas is this one, Geraldine Brooks' Horse. Um, I have read People of the Book by this author and I've seen this one floating around. So I was thrilled to unwrap this one on Christmas. Uh, it, but yeah, it's one I haven't read anything about yet. I do love the cover of this one quite a bit. I think it'll be a good, a good read and I didn't own it and I haven't read it. So it was a perfect gift. So thank you very much to uh, my husband's family for getting me this book for Christmas. I really appreciate it. And then the next book I saw and just thought it was beautiful and then realized what it was about and I'm just ecstatic. So the book is called Hester by Lori Lico Albanese. And so this book, Hester, uh, is a kind of a loose, is it a loose retelling or is it a, what it says is, who is the real Hester Prynne? Uh, Isabel Gamble is a young seamstress carrying generations of secrets when she set sail from Scotland in the early 1800s with her husband, Edward, an apothecary who has fallen under the spell of opium, has piled up debts, forcing them to flee Glasgow for a fresh start in the new world. But only days after they've arrived in Salem, Edward uh, abruptly joins a, a departing ship as a medic, leaving Isabel penniless and alone in a strange country, forced to make her way by any means possible. So kind of, it is the, um, it says, Hester is a timeless tale of art, ambition, desire that explores the roots of female creative power and the men who try to shut it down. But it is, uh, uh, in the sensuous and hypnotizing tale inspired by the iconic heroine of the Scarlet Letter. So it's a, it's inspired by the Scarlet Letter. If you're not familiar, Hester Prynne 
is the main character in the scarlet letter which has been years since i've read that so i would love to read this along with the scarlet letter again and kind of get a feel but look at this cover is that not beautiful i think i also have a thing for flowers but it's also red and black i think that's it if it's red and black publishing companies red and black it's like i have to buy it but how beautiful this flower this floral cover is of this book but hester and the last one I, I think I saw this on AJ Dunn from AJ Dunn Reads and Writes channel as one of their favorite books this year, and it is Demon Copperhead by Barbara Kingsolver. Uh, yeah, I did end up picking up this particular book, I, largely because of how much they loved this book. I have read the Poisonwood Bible, but it has been years and years. And so this particular one, when you read the first part of it, it says, Demon Copperhead is the story of a boy born to a, te born to a teenage single mother in a single wide trailer with no assets beyond his dead father's good looks, copper colored hair, a caustic wit, and a fierce talent for survival. In a plot that never pauses for breath relayed in his own unsparing voice demon braves the modern perils of foster care child labor derelict schools athletic success addiction disastrous loves and crushing losses oh boy okay so demon copperhead that is the other book that i ended up picking up at the half off barnes and noble annual sale yeah they they get me that cell gets me every time. So do I want to try a stack? This is a big stack of books. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get ready. <laughs> All right, I've moved back, so I have room. Okay, so we have, and I'll put them in my right hand, which is stronger than my left. So Demon Copperhead. And these are kind of all over. Um, Horse by Geraldine Brooks. Ah, okay. Hester. I'm trying to get the hardbacks up first. Killers of a Certain Age. Oh boy, killers of a certain age. I can do it, I can do it, I promise. Okay, then we have The Sinner and the Saint. I'm not doing very well. Okay, and then we have Long Division, Crime and Punishment. Oh boy, Erehawan, I think that's, I'm not sure that's how you say that. Okay, I can do it, hold on, yikes. The Sorrows of Young, oop. The Sorrows of Young Werther. Okay. Bean, we're going to do the last two at once. The Crucible and the House on Mango Street. I almost dropped it, y'all. It's like, <laughs> it's like very perilously stacked. But that is my last book haul of 2023. I'm fairly confident about that. I'm going to put these down before they fall down and <laughs> I hope everyone is having a wonderful holiday season and a happy new year and whoo anxiety about that almost falling as always like comment and subscribe and until next time everyone thanks bye